Okay, hello there, I'm Dennis. And in this video, we're gonna install Sparky Linux. It's based on Debian. We'll come back to this webpage here in a second. So I have it set up in VirtualBox. I've given it two cores of my processor, four gigabytes of RAM. I've enabled the EFI, and I give it 52.5 gigs of virtual disk space. Click start so we can get her going. Right off the bat, we got Start Linux, or Sparky Linux US English, Sparky Linux US English No Splash, Failsafe Mode, ORAM, Sparky Linux TORAM, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, I'll have to look it up and I'll put it in the title right there. ORAM, do RAM. Sounds like we're going to check the RAM, is what it sounds like. More languages if you need it. Sparky Linux in text mode. We're going to launch. Sparky Linux, US English. Okay, we got guest editions. Let's find out. Okay, you gonna resize? Thought maybe it might resize. Looking like it had them. Let me go right control F, put us in full screen here. Take away some of that blinding light distraction. There we have our mouse. But it wasn't captured until way over here, so that does not look like guest editions. It's okay. Give us a desktop, we'll be happy. We can do something about the resolution. Let's see here. Is that a terminal? Nope. Terminal. X render. All right, so we do have it. So we got X render. Space hyphen S 1680 by 1050, I believe is right. And there we go. Good enough. All right, let's find the installer. And they were kind enough to put an icon on the desktop for the installer. Up here we have our trash, cycle bin, file system, home, and Sparky Linux installation guide online. We'll click on that just to see what it says. See what they use for a web browser. Internet, they use Firefox. Is it going to open? Okay, while we're waiting on that to open, I'm going to double click the installer. Sparky installer. Right. Boy, that's huge. <laughs> I don't have any problem reading that. Let's see. Yep. Didn't help. All right, so American English for me is correct. About, donate, Sparky support, and known issues. Click on next. I wonder if this will let me resize. Most of them will not. No, we don't. Wow. A little sensitive there. Oh, yeah, cool. In fact, just bring it full size. American English, that is correct. About. I wonder if that's about Sparky or Calamaris. We're going to say okay because it was Calamaris. Click on next. America, Chicago. That is correct. That is the right time zone. Say next. English default. Let's do a test here. This is a percent sign. There we go. Click next. All right. Now, erase the disk and all current data, data currently present will be Selected storage, so it's going to give us two partitions, one EFI and one root. I don't like that. This is with no swap. Let's see what it'll do with no hibernate. It's going to give us some swap with with hibernate. It's going to give us a little more swap. So if I was on a laptop and I wanted them to format my disk, that would be the option that I would make. If I was on a computer and I wanted them or a desktop, and I wanted them to format it, that would be the option. But in this case, I'm gonna do manual. And we're gonna need a new partition table. We're gonna select GUID or GPT. Free space, left click on that, come down there to the bottom and say create. This one right here in megabytes will be 512 megabytes. File system will be FAT32. All right, mount point should be EFI boot or boot EFI. And there should be a flag for boot. 
and I'm going to go ahead and select this ESP. Used to, when you'd select the boot, both of those would highlight. But I don't think this will hurt. We'll say create. This one here will be 2048 megabytes, which represents two gigabytes. File system will be Linux swap. There's no mount point for swap. And there is a flag. Left click on that or tick the box and say OK. Left click the free space. Click on create. And I'm going to divide that close to half. We're going to say mount point. It's going to be slash represents root. There is a flag for root. So say OK. And left click on the free space. Click on create again. We're going to leave all the sizes the same. But we're going to mount that to slash home and there will not be a flag for that click ok there's our partitions right here and red is our efi orange is our swap this will be our root partition and this will be our home but i'm good with that click next my name all right now it's going to ask for a password and it's going to ask me i won't be able to just give it my regular password I don't think unless they've changed this they have changed it sparky linux last year when i installed it once made me put in a long password <laughs> so login automatically i'm not going to do that for the sake of this demonstration so we can see the login screen all right so i've got my name my password and we're going to say next here's a summary of all it's going to do right here oh this looks correct the english time zone is all correct i'm gonna say install now let's see huh. gonna try to change it size of it get it out of the way very sensitive touchy we could go through the menu or we could go through the web page. Let's go through the web page real quick because we don't know. I'm going to right control F to get out of full screen and open up my web browser to sparkylinux.org. Sparky Linux is a GNU Linux distribution created on the top of a Debian GNU Linux operating system. Sparky is fast, lightweight, and fully customizable OS, which offers a few versions for different users and different tasks. We'll click on read more right there. That'll continue this article. Fully featured OS, minimum GUI with open box window manager pre-installed. Based on Debian, three special editions for different tasks. Game over for XFCE, uh, for gamers, I'm sorry, which is the XFCE desktop. Multimedia for audio, video, and HTML, HTML pages create, creating. That's also on XFCE. Rescue for fixing broken OS is on OpenBox. Minimum CLI, command line interface with no X server. Sparky supports about 20 different desktops. Stable flavor and the rolling flavor. What I got was the stable. If I was in, in doing this on real hardware, I would select the rolling. That just happens to be the way I like to. That's the way I roll. <laughs> if you like Sparky, Simply install it side to side or over your present OS. Main features, Sparky is Debian based, stable or rolling, lightweight, your favorite desktops to choose from, and Sparky is free. We go back up to the top here. We click on about, it will open this up. Sparky is just right where I was just at on the other page. To download it, go back up here, click on download, it opens up this link. Here you can choose your stable or your rolling. I selected stable. Here I selected 64 bit torrent, but it was on the XFCE right here. All right. But that you can see that they offer LXQT, XFCE, a minimal graphical user interface. Or 32 and 64 bits, by the way. Another minimal, minimal command line interface. A ARM. I saw they're showing here, but there are a lot of desktops. This is the wiki. Minimum system requirements. It hits you with an ad. 
32-bit or 64-bit Pentium 4 or AMD Athlon, RAM 128 megs on the command line. LXDE and LXQT open box only, only require 256 megs. XFCE requires 512 megs. Swap partition will be 512 or larger. Hard drive 2 gigabytes, 10 gigabytes, and 20 for the game over. All right. The back button, get me back to the menu here. Additional sparky tools for different tasks. Apparently, it's full of different tools. This will give you basically a manual for the USB disk formatter. So, yeah, this would be a manual. Yeah, manual for having to do it. Pluto app get installed sparky USB formatter. And this would be what it looks like when you open it. That's pretty cool. I wonder if that comes in by default. Sparky USB formatter. Let's see where we're at here real quick. USB should. There it is. We already have it installed. Or at least it's on the live version. No USB keys found. Please insert one. I'm going to just cancel out. Awesome. I always give any operating system with a thumbs up just for including that for the new users let's see minimize this again pro f bring up my web browser go back to about it says it's not recommended for new to linux users that you should have some knowledge of linux in general Right here in general, Sparky is not targeted to Linux beginners, rather to users with some amount of Linux knowledge. Anyway, the Linux beginners are welcome to our forums. Is our forums are open for any question. Even if you're a new user, this is not a bad distribution, and it's based on Debian, so you can't really go wrong based on Debian. Uh, you can't go wrong. That was. What I meant was you stand a good chance of accomplishing a very good user experience using a debian based distribution covered the team let's look at the team see who they are powwow pavruv pajanowski pajanowski founder developer repo holder sparky tools creator and iso builder wow that's an important name right there in sparky linux Community members help with many other different tasks for private reasons. I cannot publish nicknames only in alphabetical order. Captain Jack, Lamy or Lamy07, Moros, <laughs> the Black Pig, and Sparky Tools Translators. If you'd like to join our community, you can help test live versions, find solutions for existing problems, suggest your own improvements and changes, translate Sparky Tools to your language, Help our community members at our forums. Tell your friends about Sparky Linux. Tell them about Linux. That was pretty nice saying, put Linux first and then Sparky Linux. That says a lot about their attitude. Nice. Very nice. Let's see. Join our community is better now. Test version. So, yeah, you can actually test their releases before they come out and see what you find. And apparently they will listen to you. That's pretty nice. Go back to their home page here. Anyway, that's Sparky Linux. There's an awful lot of information on here, a lot of helpful information. There's also a lot of, I uh, forget the right word, of, of bragging <laughs> about their distribution. And then you can't blame anybody for talking good about something they helped produce or even produced. Very good. And it's based on Debian. So like I said, we are in safe hands. One person phrased it, standing on the shoulders of giant, which is, was talking about Debian. So we're still, well, we're in the removing the packages, so we're not far from being finished here. We can give a brief look into the menu here. Under the favorites, I'm going to change this real quick. Pardon me. I'll put the categories to my left next to the over here all right so let's start at the bottom under system this is all the stuff that's in the control panel for settings manager print settings spark advanced installer 
Make this big. Hey, there we go. About Sparky Linux. OS name, Sparky Linux, version 6, code name Pro Tolo. Date and time, November 2020, this. Time zone, American Chicago. That's home. Huh. I was going to say that may be trying to open up a web browser. I'm going to close that out. That takes you straight to the web browser where I was just at. Which is okay. Application Finder. Let's see, I was under System. I'm sorry. Start back over here. Aptus. Keep your system up to date. Clean, install, and remove packages. That's a pretty nice tool. Beach Blit is root. Beach Blit is normal user. Bulk rename. GDB package installer. That's impressive too. Of course, I, you would expect that to come in on a Debian based system g parted which may disappear more and more distributions are leaving that in the start menu and personally they've got my thumbs up on that because if it's not there i'll end up installing it and i will use it live usb creator okay we just talked about that nice midnight commander file manager print setting right out of the box a sparky advanced installer sparky advanced installer for the devs Sparky Installer, I think all three of those will disappear. It comes with the Synaptic Package Manager, System Upgrade Tool, so you don't have to do the command line. That's pretty nice. System Upgrade Scheduler, so you can apparently schedule when you want your system to even reach out and look for a, a upgrade, update. Time Shift for backing up your system and restoring it. That's a nice, that's a nice software to include by default. USB Disk Formatter. And XFCE terminal. For settings. Like I said, this will be all be in the settings manager here. Under Office, it comes with the full suite of LibreOffice. Let's see, LibreOffice Writer. Let's see what version that is. Yep, it's opening. Okay. Uh oh. Got to pick off all of this stuff first. Okay. Release notes. No, nope, not yet. All right, about LibreOffice version 7.0.1.1.0 plus. <laughs> okay, close out of that. I think that's, if not the latest version, close to it. That was under Office. That was LibreOffice. A trail for a document viewer PDF. Under multimedia, it comes with cheese for taking photos from a, uh, from a webcam or any kind of cam that would hook up to your computer. Or XI, listen to, explore, or manage your audio collection. Huh, I hadn't heard of that one. XL. Huh, Fox Audio, radio station, Sparky Tube, download and play videos from YouTube. That's a graphical, yeah. Close out of that. You have not entered a URL. Well, I'm trying to get out of there. All right. That's a pretty nice setup. See, that was under internet. No, that was under multimedia. VLC player. That play just about anything you want to play. Not everything, but almost. Desktop recorder. Nice. And XF burn. Under internet, we got Firefox. XChat. Chat with other people online, Pigeon Internet Messenger. I've heard a lot of people say that that's kind of old, but I don't know. I don't use it. Sparky Online Installation Guide, Thunderbird for emails, transmission for your BitTorrents, and you get download simple multiple URLs and apply it to one of the settings. Huh, nice. Under Graphics, Document Scanner, Scanner, Image Viewer. And LibreOffice Draw under Development, Icon Browser. Under Accessories, we got Application Finder. Bulk Rename for renaming a whole bunch of files at one time. Florence Virtual Keyboard. That's going to be a, a like for a touch screen where your keyboard will be on the screen. Calculator, the best calculator for me. <laughs> Image Viewer, we just saw that. Like DM, they're using Like DM. Our uh, installer is finished. This was our last category. Let's go ahead and go down. Menu editor. That's 
menu libre or libre menu midnight commander midnight commander editor mouse pad notes or global time now that's a nice addition i was gonna have to put that in there anyway or select lightweight clipboard manager password and keys screenshot for taking pictures of your wallpaper or whatever sparky first run the first run of sparky linux that must be like a welcome screen we're going to get to see when we reboot here text info Dunar file manager x archiver by default and xf burn okay cool all right so i'm going to say done here go back to the menu click on restart and i'll just stay in full screen mode here please remove the medium and hit enter Close the tray and hit enter. It did not remove the ISO. You can tell it's restarted too fast. I do believe. I uh, probably can't find out. Rack Pro F. Back into the virtual box. Sparky Linux. Under settings. May open. Let's see. Yeah, it did. It did delete it. Excellent. Nice. It didn't look like it did. Dennis, virtual box, log in. I'm going to write control F to get back into full screen there. And I did not change my settings. <laughs> okay, so log in. I'm looking for my name and then my password. Let's find out. Not going to work. Going to require lowercase d right here. And tab to the password. And there we go. I'm connected. Lost my resolution there though. Let's see if we can. Thank you for installing Sparky Linux. This lets you fully upgrade the system. Recommended. Install missing language packages. You can perform all the jobs one by one or selected one only. Would you like to do it now? Well, I guess let's say okay. It's going to require my password. In this case, oh, it's that first run thing. That we saw in the menu while that's doing that let's go system or settings i'm sorry display and let's choose one 1680 by 1050 say apply close okay so now it's going out online it's looking for updates excuse me doing a system upgrade so this would be the same thing as running apt update and and apt upgrade based on Debian Bullseye, upgrading Firefox. Okay, so where was we at here in the menu? I wonder did Gparted stay? Let me change this around real quick. Position categories, there we go. All right, so let me see. Is this G parted? Did it stay? G parted did not stay. Huh. All right. It's bigger here. Let's go to all applications about me. All right. That's a mugshot. That's a very nice program to have installed by default. I wonder if it'll let me choose user share backgrounds xfce let's go with teal they apply and there we go so if i'd had my one of my photos in here obviously i could easily put that picture here i'll we'll say apply which i guess is okay there's i didn't have to restart for that to appear all right, back under all applications about XFCE. Click on that. Back to all applications, accessibility to improve keyboard and mouse accessibility, advanced network configuration, appearance, application finder, aptus or aptus, atrial a document viewer. Keep your system up to date and clean, by the way, on the apt us or us. That may be part of what's running right now. A trio document viewer, bleach bit as root and user. Bluetooth adapters come in by default. Book rename, cheese for your cameras. Color profiles, desktops, set desktop background. 
and icon behavior display document scanner exhale yeah we've seen all of this firewall we didn't see that firewall configuration let's see give it my password might as well just turn it on people say you don't need it but there we go let's turn it on anyway okay we're good was there about sparky a while ago there was there we go Let's see what that says now will it open up the browser nope then it's in a virtual box kernel 5.7 ram four gigabytes swap two gigabytes english us member of the groups here it's dial dial out hadn't heard of that group cd rom floppy floppy whoa this is for old machines Pseudo, oh, I'm a member of the pseudo group. Audio, DIP, video, plug devices, users, scanner, LP admin, net dev, and Bluetooth. Nice. Huh. That's kind of unusual putting me in the pseudo group. I guess that's the same as the wheel group, though. But under all applications, firewall, we just turned on. Florence Virtual Keyboard, we saw that. Calculator, GW Package Installer, Hex Chat. You know, I think we've seen most of this. Live USB, Log Out, Mail Reader, Menu Editor, Parcelite. I don't remember seeing that before. Huh. Pigeon, Power Manager, Print Settings. Screenshot, Synaptic Package Manager. Huh. A lot of good tools are listed in here. A lot of good tools are included by default. Let's see, will Control Alt T bring me a terminal? It does not. But I could go here and right click and say Add to Panel. And go down here and say Right click and say Move. Run left click and move it. Put it right there. Bring up a terminal. And that update thing went away. So disk free after a full installation. Device three, 5.2 gigabytes. Not bad, especially considering all the software that's installed here. Free says we're using 564. Is there some sort of system monitor? I didn't see other than a task manager. Bet we could get it though. Let's find out. Let's say sudo app install gnome hyphen system hyphen monitor. See if they have it in their repositories. Could not get a lot. Huh, is there a package manager running? Yep, sure is. Yep. So you, they've confused each other apparently because now that I close that one out, this one's going again. I thought this one was done. Huh, apparently it wasn't. Well, let's see what Task Manager says. See, where would that be? System Task Manager. 21% of the two cores I give it. 17% of the RAM that I give it, no swap. Task Manager works, I guess, but it's just not my choice. I wonder do they have HTOP installed by default and just not in the menu? Nope. Surely they don't have glances. I didn't see benchmarker or info. Nope. So those, are, those would be a couple things that I would definitely want to install. I sure thought this was finished. Anyway, let's see. We got the clock, and hopefully that's the. Nope, that's the XFCE dot uh, clock. Let's see some panel. Add new items. Let's see. Oh, Raj. Panel clock. Let's add that. Say add. Close. Left click, and remove. Right click, and remove the date time. Now we can. Left click on here and select properties. Get rid of the 
calendar. Quit. All right, now set my foreground, set my background. Foreground will be yellow, yellow, yellow. Say okay. Yeah, that was the numbers, really. Here we're going to go darkest blue as we can get. Pretty dark right there. Let's say okay. And there we go. Now to make that bigger, pretty easy too. Make it 17. Say okay. Now, if you didn't like that particular font, you could change it right here again. And you can also look at the man pages and tell you what these right here do. That's including everything, I believe. The hour, minute, the seconds, and the time of day. Really nice clock. Man, this is taking a long time. Come on there, Sparky. All right, so that was our clock. We just changed our clock out from that normal or default XFCE clock, panel clock, and we put in the Orage panel. Here we should have workspaces, a volume, Let's see, we do we have one called Notices? Flipboard Manager and Internet, we do not. And that's all, the panel was blank. There was nothing in what I would call the taskbar for quick launches. You saw me add the terminal there. On a fresh boot, we're still only using 551 megs of RAM. That is not bad. Let's see, we already saw the kernel. Look at it again. 5.7.03 AMD 64. We've looked at the entire, the only thing we did not look at was wallpapers. Let's see if they got anything new in here now. Well, see blue. Oh man, that reminiscent of XP or what? Nope, was in this little picture though. More blue. A little crowded, very nice, but a little crowded. That's a squirrel. That's a squirrel. I think that's a fox squirrel. <laughs> well, there's a nice scene. Yeah, that's a nice scene. Ooh, there's lots of blue there. Is that the blue angels, I wonder? Oh, old timey flyers. That was pretty nice, too. Anything with water in, I'm a somewhat of a sucker. And then next criteria would probably be something with blue in it. So they do have some nice wallpapers. Here they just got some customized ones. Is there branding on that? No branding. Huh. Kind of surprising. Which one did I like the best? Probably this one. Yeah, sort of. That'll work for now, though. That's under artwork. No wonder I didn't find it while ago. Huh. Okay. We'll close that out. Well, I can't tell you how far along this is. thought it was updating. But... Sure is taking its time. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for Sparky Linux. Sparky Linux is based on Debian. It does have quite an array of programs that will get you going right out of the box. Well, very good. This here is Sparky Linux. Sparky Linux is a pretty operating system. I think it's actually pretty nice. I, I did discover this not long after I started using MX Linux. I'd already started using MX, so I didn't make the transfer into this. But this will probably make it on my top 11. Was my top 10. Now I'm up to 11. <laughs> okay, this is going to conclude this video. I thank you so much for watching. Sparky Linux, based on Debian, full of all kind of programs, has good technical support. The Developers are seemingly easy to get in touch with as far as trying to get some help. All right, that does it. Thanks for watching. Bye. Peace out.